Thank you, everyone, for joining me again in this episode. We're actually going to get into the actual installs of the MIM sync service and the MIM service and portal. One thing I want to say before we do that is Microsoft has changed the service pack one branches. I'm going to call them branches. They're not calling it branches, but I'm going to. The MIM 2016 Service Pack 1 release to manufacturing is now suggested to be uninstalled and go back to MIM 2016 release to manufacturing and then apply the Service Pack 1 patch. It's an MSP. There are three hot fixes that can go on to the 2016 release to manufacturing. No matter what version you're on, the RTM or the three hot fixes, you can install this MSP to get to Service Pack 1. They are only going to release hot fixes on the MSP branch. So that's why they suggest to uninstall that RTM service pack one and go down just to the plain RTM without the service pack. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're just going to install the RTM and then we're going to patch it. So let's go ahead and jump in and install the sync service. I already have my CD-ROM mounted, so I'm going to open that up and go into the synchronization service folder and right click on the setup and say run as administrator. I'm going to next through this, accept the terms, next. Now here's where we're getting asked, what's our SQL server? The default selections are this computer and the default instance, so that's what we're doing. The service account is underscore mem sync and our password and our domain. Now, if you remember in our last video, we've created some domain groups and added some service accounts to these groups. If you don't change anything on this screen, it's going to create local groups. You actually have to say the NetBIOS domain name and backslash to make these domain groups. And I'm going to take this chance to change this to mem instead of fem and I created my w my password management group as mem sync password reset so I have to change that then we'll say next I'm not going to allow it to enable firewall rules because I've turned off the firewall and I've had some installs bomb out if it tries to enable rules but the firewall's off. So I'm going to not check that and say next. And then I'll hit install. You could receive a warning message here saying the service accounts are not configured correctly. This will show up if you didn't go into the user rights assignments and assign the logon as a service, deny logon from the network, and deny logon locally because the installer checks for these. But it's just a warning. You can do that without setting those uh, group policy objects. But you will receive a warning that says you have to back up your encryption key. And so we'll do that by hitting OK and we'll save this somewhere. You will need this if you ever need to restore from a backup. So save that. <laughs> and it's successfully completed. So we'll just say finished. Now in our start menu, we should have the synchronization service. And here we go. So next up, let's close out of this and go back to our CD-ROM. 
Let's go to the root of that and then in the service and portal. Now we'll do the same thing in here. Right click on setup and say run as administrator. We'll next through this. Say no, I'm gonna say no on the improvement program. And next. Now we have more options to select in here. We're gonna change a couple of these, but we are installing the MIM service. We're not going to install MIM reporting because that requires System Center Service Manager. And in my opinion, it's a bit clunky uh, compared to some of the, f the open source options that are out there. I think those would be a much better choice rather than having to stand up a data warehouse with Service Manager. So we're not gonna do that. Right now, we're not going to do privileged access management. We'll leave that turned off. But we will install the MIM portal. We're going to tell it not to install the MIM password re registration and password reset portal. So we're not going to install those. And we'll say next. Now it's asking where our SQL Server is and what to name the database. Well, I'm going to correct. Microsoft yet again do their job for them and change that to MIM service. And I'm going to say yes we are creating a new database and we'll say next. The next screen asks for a mail server location. You have to put one in even if you have a server or not. Well I don't right now so I'm going to actually uncheck all of these and I'm just going to put in this local this local server as the mail server. Then we'll say next, we're gonna say generate a new self-issued certificate. The service account name is going to be mem service and the password and the domain and the email account. Down there at the bottom it says it's going to use to be used to process requests and approvals. So maybe later on we'll come back and configure this, maybe get an exchange server up. But for now we're not. We have to put one in, so I'm just going to make something up. And say next. This next screen is asking what server is housing the synchronization service? Well, that's the install we just did. So it's going to be SB-MIM. It's also asking what the management account is going to be. And that's going to be sandbox underscore MIM sync. And we'll say next. Now this is asking the actual service and portal service address. So you can actually hit that through a URL resource. And that's going to be sb-mem without the HTTP prefixes. Then we'll say next. Now it's asking what the SharePoint site collection is. So that is sb-mem.sandbox.local. We'll say next. We're not going to enter in the registration portal URL. We'll leave that blank. Where I am going to say grant authenticated users access, but I'm not going to let it open the firewall porch the same as before. The firewall's turned off. It may bomb out. I'm not going to take that chance. Now we'll say next. We're going to leave these unchecked because we're not doing anything with the registration or reset portals right now. And we'll say next. Then we'll say install. This one might take a little bit longer than last time. And the setup is finished. Now we should be able to open up a browser and go to our sb-mem forward slash identity management and there's the portal
I'm going to minimize that. The last thing that I want to do is actually install the password change notification service. So inside the CD-ROM, there's password change notification service here. And I am going to copy the folder and jump over to the domain controller and place that folder there. So I'm going to jump down into that folder that I copied over and then we need to extend the schema or install the schema. So I'm going to use MSI exec forward slash I and then the name of the password change notification service and I'm going to take away the period backslash on that. And I'm going to say schema only is equal to true and we'll hit enter. Now we'll just say next. And then it's warning us that it's going to update the schema and we'll say okay to proceed. And the schema was updated successfully, so I'll say finished. And now we need to run the MSI once more without any MSI properties. And I'll just say enter. And now we'll say next to that, accept the terms, and next, and then we'll say install. Then we'll say finish. And I'll let it reboot. Once the server comes back up, go ahead and open up a PowerShell session as administrator and change the directory to C program files, Microsoft password change notification. Now we're, we're going to configure the change password change notification service, but first we need to check the spin for the mem sync account. So there's our spin from before that we set up for actually the FIM synchronization service. Well, we need to do the same thing, but for the password change notification service. So we'll just say set spin dash A. Spin free, the spin prefix, we're gonna say password change notification service client forward slash, and then the server name, sb-mem.sandbox.local. and then the domain and the account. We'll say enter. Now we can do the password change notification service config executable. And then we can list the configuration. And we have no configuration in there as expected. So what we need to do is actually add a target. And we do that by running the command again, but with add target name. And I'm just going to name it SB mem. The address is a fully qualified domain name. slash s and the spin so the spin that we created the forward slash fi and this is going to be the exclusion group I'm going to do domain users slash f which is the uh, username format to deliver to the target and we're going to include the Parameter one, which is the actual DN slash I, that is the keep alive or heartbeat interval, and that's in seconds. I'm just going to say 600 there. 
slash D, it says that actually disables or enables the target. And I'm going to say false to actually enable the target. So slash D is say it's disabled. No, false. And then the warning level interval with WI, and I'm just going to put that 60. And I'm going to say enter. And it will return with the configuration. So I think that's the last thing I'm going to do in this video. So I'm going to leave it here. And in the next video, we're actually going to get in and configure the MIM sync service and the MIM portal. We're going to hook up Active Directory and the MIM service together. So thank you. We're getting, we're getting really, really close. So the anticipation is, you know, it's, it's growing. Um, but thank you very much for watching the video. Uh, if you liked it, just hit the little bitty like thumbs up for me. Uh, you subscribe as well. Um, leave me some comments. Let me know. Um, let me know what you're thinking on it. Questions. Uh, just let me know. Talk with me. So thank you again. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you next time.